daybreak of the third day when Mary Magdalene made her way to the tomb where Jesus lay buried. Suddenly, the earth began to shake and the stone was rolled away. An angel of the Lord, whose appearance was like lightning, said to Mary, Do not be afraid. I know that you are looking for Jesus, who was crucified. He is not here. Come, see the place where he lay. Two thousand years later, the grave is still empty. The price has been paid. The door is open. Even though the cross is no longer anchored in Golgotha's mountain, the blood of redemption still flows. The arms that reach from the cross are still reaching. The voice that beckoned the disciples then still calls, Look at my hands and my feet. And one day, those of us who believe in Him and confess Him as our Lord will spend eternity with Him because Jesus is alive. Sunday here on Easter. So let's ask God's blessing as we continue to worship together. So glad you've joined us today. Let's pray. 
Lord, we come together and say thank you again for this opportunity to say thanks for all that you've done for us in Jesus Christ, your Son. Thank you for those who are joining us live stream. We pray your blessing. Thank you for the technology that we can share. For those who have arrived on campus, welcome. Lord, thank you. Most of all, we welcome you today for this opportunity to celebrate and honor you. We pray for your blessing in Jesus' name. Amen. And amen. 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 Let's continue our worship. Amen. It's a great time to turn off your cell phones and bring your bulletin. Do whatever you need to do. Get ready to worship today as we celebrate our faith. Let's stand together and sing about that great news that Christ is risen. All the words be on the screen today. Let's celebrate as his people today.
This is the story of God. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. God created man in his own image, and God saw everything that he had made, and it was very good. God placed man in a garden and told him not to eat from a certain tree. But man disobeyed God's command. And sin came into the world through Adam, and death through sin. And so death spread to all men, because all sinned. But God loved man and made a plan. Man would make a sacrifice to cover his sins. But this was only temporary and was not the perfect sacrifice. Jesus, God's Son, came from heaven as a baby, born to a virgin mother in a humble stable, and lived a perfect life. He kept God's commands and loved and helped people. Jesus came to be the true sacrifice for the whole world. Jesus gave his life by dying on the cross to become the perfect sacrifice, to pay the price for our sins. God showed his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Jesus died, was buried, and three days later rose from the grave. Jesus ascended to heaven and will one day come again. So what does all of this mean for you? Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 reads, The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 5.8 But God demonstrates his own love toward us, and that while we are still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 10.9 That if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Do you want to follow Jesus? Amen.
So when people say, because many years ago when I worked at Ford Motor Company, before I went into the ministry, my coworker, uh, we had lots of time to talk while we did our jobs. His attitude and his philosophy was, when you're dead, you're dead. That's it. And because of that, he was going to have a great time in this life because he was convinced that when you die, that's the end. And so I spent many hours praying, talking, encouraging him to think about uh, what if you pass away through the doorway of death and you discover in eternity that you were wrong. And so we want to have it clear this morning and be encouraged. And so when someone says to you about, oh, I don't believe in that stuff, you can respond with grace and in appropriate ways share with people the biblical perspective. So, chapter 15, beginning with verse 12. Now, if Christ is preached as raised from the dead, how can some of you say there is no resurrection of the dead? But, if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then our preaching is without foundation, and so is our faith. In addition, we are found to be false witnesses about God because we have testified about God that he has raised up Christ, whom he did not raise up. In fact, the dead are not raised. And so if the dead are not raised, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is worthless. You are still in your sins. Therefore, those who have fallen asleep, that is, died in Christ, have also perished. In Christ, for this life only, we should be pitied more than anyone else. Let's consider these great arguments, the response to about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. What does it mean? And do we really believe it? Well, the first thing... Paul would argue is, if there's no resurrection of Christ, then the gospel, the story of Christ being raised from the dead, is nothing more than a fairy tale. Perhaps a good fairy tale, but it has no authority, no power. And then he'd go on to argue, if Christ has not been raised from the dead, then all of us who are preaching... All of us who share the story, all of us who celebrate Easter together, it's worthless. It has no foundation. It's just a, something that we do, a tradition that's carried on from generation to generation. Think about how depressing that is, how sad that is, that we gather together and celebrate something that has no power, no authority in our lives. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. yes. mm -hmm. This would be the most depressing day of all because everything we do has no meaning. It's just an empty tradition. And furthermore, why would we continue doing that? Well, secondly, Paul would argue, if there's no resurrection of Christ, then our faith is worthless. <coughs> In other words, believing in God has no value. We might as well believe in things. How sad it is, you go out and you buy a new car, a new toaster, anything, and they ask you, do you want extended warranty? It's like, well, it doesn't come with a warranty? You know, why would I buy an extended warranty? Because they're counting on for it to break down? And so... <laughs> Our faith is worthless, you know. There's no point of believing in God if Christ is not raised from the dead. And secondly, then, all of us who are believers who follow Christ, our faith is worthless. We have no point of sharing our faith if Christ has been, not been raised from the dead. Well, a third argument that Paul would make from this wonderful passage of Scripture, if Christ is not raised from the dead, 
then there's no forgiveness of sin. God cannot and will not forgive us of our sin. And so we, for the rest of our life, must carry the burden, the guilt of our sin. Now, every weekend you can find lots of places where people go to try and get rid of the guilt and the shame of their mistakes, of their sin. And they turn to drugs, alcohol, anything to try and overcome <coughs> the burden of sin that stays with us. And so if Christ has not been raised from the dead, then how can we get rid of our sin, our guilt, our shame? Because all the things we try will not work. And then here's the saddest thing of all. If Christ has not been raised from the dead, then all those who have died before us are lost. There's no hope. This is so sad. Christ helps us understand without the resurrection of Christ, life really has no value or no meaning. It's we just somehow put our head down and push ahead in this life and try to do the best we can Knowing has really no point of value. And sadly, there are lots of people who believe that. One of the greatest privileges God gives to us as believers comes in verse number 20. But, now Christ has been raised from the dead. Amen. <laughs> That's the truth. That gives us our hope. Amen. And so when you and I encounter someone who's lost all hope, who sees no point, no value in this life, we can share the truth. That there is hope. And it's hope based on Jesus Christ rising from the dead. Amen? Amen. And so today, first of all, I hope that all of us, as we learn, as we know the truth, that all of us have had an opportunity to embrace the truth, we can celebrate this day. And it's not just about the jelly beans, although, you know, I like orange jelly beans. <laughs> already received my little pack of orange jelly beans already. <laughs> There's lots of fun traditions today, but the greatest blessing is when we know the truth, God loves us. And he offers us hope that will carry us through this life and into eternity. Amen. Because of the hope, I have lots of family and friends who have already passed on to eternity. I kind of picture it this way. And I have some biblical support for this. It is a mystery what happens, but the Bible gives us some clues. But when I walk through the doorway of death, I'll be excited because I have a wonderful grandmother who prayed for me. I have parents, aunts, and uncles, all who invested in my life. What I am today is, is a great blessing of how they encourage me. I can remember way back, like in the fifth and sixth grade, I would bring my report card home. And my, my parents' incentive was they would give me a quarter for every A. <laughs> now, I know because of inflation, <laughs> I know today a quarter is not that much for an A. <laughs> and I think I would get a dime for every B and a nickel. But if I got a D or an E, they subtracted money. <laughs> and so today, parents, you might want to consider a dollar for every A. You know, for whatever it might be in the Senate. Amen? <laughs> parents, if you have a struggle with that, come see me. I'll give you a loan. <laughs> what a blessing for all those who have invested in me and would say good things like they're proud of me. <clears throat> They invested encouraging me and just all the support. So I look forward to the day to be reunited. So there'll be a great reunion 
seeing family and friends who've gone to hell. How do I know that? Because the hope we have, because Jesus has been raised from the dead. Amen. He's overcome death, hell, and the grave. That's our hope. That's the reality. That's the practical things. Knowing for sure, no doubts, that Jesus has raised from the dead. The greatest thing of all, of course, is we get to meet Jesus. And just to bow at his feet and say thank you. Thank you for what you've done for us. Now, Christ has been resurrected. I encourage and challenge all of us. Do you believe that? If you do, then you know that God loves you. If you're not sure about the resurrection, then let me encourage you to study the rest of chapter 15. It will help you understand more about how Paul encourages. This was a great message of the hope that God gives in Jesus Christ. More than anything, do you know that God loves you? Because he's demonstrated that. <coughs> because the hope we have in Christ. Secondly, can we trust his word? It's been given, written down, preserved for over 2,000 years. In a variety of ways. What a blessing where we live that each of us can have our own copy of God's Word. Mm -hmm. And then finally, the joy of this life. Because I know that Jesus is raised from the dead. That's my hope. And so my response <coughs> is, I can obey how God leads me in this life. When He instructs me and gives me direction. Amen. Many years ago, many of you know I loved to hunt. And there was a time when I was kind of discouraged about hunting because I hadn't got anything for quite a while. And so it's kind of like a nice warm day out like today. I'm going out to hunt in my little place. And I come and there's a trail that goes either way. So I can remember clearly stop it and just say the prayer, Lord, which way should I go so I can get a deer? And it's almost like I heard the Lord laugh. <laughs> he said, you know, doesn't matter. Choose one. Go either way because you're not going to get one. <laughs> I didn't get one. <laughs> gave me peace to know I can go and enjoy the woods. And so how awesome it is to go out, sit in the woods, enjoy God's great creation, knowing that he loves us, willing to trust his word. Do you believe in the resurrection of Jesus Christ? If you do, that gives you hope hope that you can live your life by. That's my prayer for all of us today on this wonderful day of celebration. We can celebrate because God loves us. We can celebrate because we know that we have a hope that's solid that will help us through the rest of our life and to return. Amen. Greatest blessing of hope is when we pass away through the doorway of death into eternity. Welcome home, good and faithful soul. Amen. 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 Let's stop here today. Lord, thank you that you love us. Thank you for the hope that you've given to us in Jesus Christ. Thank you that so long ago he died was buried and resurrected and now we have a hope that will not disappoint help us today Lord for all of us to find our confidence our courage in knowing that you love us 
knowing that Jesus has resurrected from the dead. We thank you for this truth. We pray that it will become part of our life. And hope will carry us for the rest of our life. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Worship team is going to come. Lead us in a song of response. During this song, would you celebrate what God has given to all of us, and that is the hope in Jesus Christ? I'll be here in the front row if you'd like to come for prayer and encouragement. Let this be a time of saying thanks for what God has done for us in Jesus Christ. Let's stand together and give God this opportunity. I invite you to sing with us and praise the Lord. My hope is found.
share one final thought. My favorite story about this time of year on Good Friday is when Jesus was crucified. And we've talked about why do we call it Good Friday? Because there was two bad guys crucified with Jesus. One criticized and insulted Jesus, but the other cried out for mercy. In God's grace, he extended that mercy to a man who had wasted his whole life. In his final moments of his life, he cried out, and God gave him a wonderful promise. Amen. And he went into eternity with the hope and forgiveness of God's great mercy and grace. Now, we all know people, and we look at them and like, there's no hope for them. You know someone like that? Could be family, friend, co-worker, politician. <laughs> someone where we compare and we look at them and say, there's no hope. And yet, because we have hope in Christ, perhaps in the dying moments of a person that we would say, there's no hope for them, no way. That they might have cried out to God and received forgiveness. That's God's great, wonderful mercy and grace. Amen? Amen. Amen. So don't ever give up. As long as there's life and opportunity, there's hope in Jesus Christ. Amen. There's someone that we can join you in praying for or ministering to. During this last song, will you take a moment, fill out a prayer card, you'll find it in the back of your chair, give it to me at the door, put it in the offering box. Thank God what God has encouraged you today from his word, from this message. Amen. And then we'll be dismissed after that. So enjoy this song. Think about what God has said to you. If there's some way we can pray for, or join you praying for someone. You know, we all know our family can be our greatest, but perhaps hardest mission field. Amen? Amen. But it's the one most Amen. worth it. So, Thank God for the hope in Jesus Christ. Amen. He gives us mercy and grace. Amen. Enjoy this last song.
live stream. Until next time, God bless you. Enjoy the hope we have in Christ. And have a great day and week of celebration. For those who are on campus here, thank you so much for being here today. God bless you. And I hope that your faith and your hope and your love are strengthened today. Let me remind you, no service tonight. Enjoy the time with your family. And for some of you who have been thinking, praying, next Sunday we're going to have our baptism in the morning. So talk to me as we celebrate and let this hope in Christ continue. God bless you.